Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number 21 and today we're returning with probably the penultimate episode of season 3 as we face Cagliari away and Fiorentina at home as we continue our pursuit of European football. Before we get to the games though, Cheryl Brescia has been getting on off camera and we've just had a new youth intake as well. Let's get to that first. But unlike in Season 1, when we saw Claudio Picardi for the first time, don't get too excited about a crop of youngsters coming through this year. I often say this, for new viewers to the channel, my youth intakes are pretty much always horrendous. Uh, the best player, based on my head of youth development's recommendation, is this guy. And I love the teamwork and work rate, right? no doubt about that. But too determination, oh my god, with the unambitious personality as well. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty disappointing in that regard. He could be right in the future, 13 finishing on a guy that's only, uh, it's only 16 years old as well. Very exciting, but um, yeah, got a long, long, long way to go in his career. That's for sure. But uh, you've got Torassi as well. He's got much better determination. There's a ball in a midfielder that could be the new David Mazai in our team, perhaps. But you'll notice as well, quite quite a few of the players in this youth intake here don't have the, uh, the highest determination and quite a, uh, a poor personality as well. This guy could be quite good as a versatile fullback, but long way to go and needs to improve that uh, determination as well. But uh, yeah, not, not, not really anyone to get excited about there again. The striker could be all right. I love the teamwork and work rate, but we need to improve the determination and change the personality as well. Anyway, Anyway, no one, no one who we know for sure, uh, you know, like Picardi, for example, is going to be amazing. So that's the run of camera then, real briefly, as you can see in the last episode, we had the goalless draw at home to Napoli and then the 3-0 loss away against Roma at the Stadio Olimpico. Four games all in the league off camera, and as you can see, a really good return to decent form for Brescia. Three wins in four, and it really should have been four wins in four as well. Uh, we start off with a victory against Sampdoria right now, sat in the relegation zone. Uh, we beat the newly promoted side by two goals to nil for our bounce back win. Eddie Salcedo scoring for the first time in such a long time. I was buzzing about that and then 20 minutes later Fabio De Paoli scoring against his former club making it 2-0 as we got a very routine three points there and following out a great 2-0 victory away in Turin against Torino Salcedo second goal in two games made it 2-0 to open the scoring 17 minutes in and then 20 minutes later once again getting another goal Sebastiano Esbozito connecting with a lovely long ball over the top by Bruno Martella to make it 2-0 in a really impressive win there We're all Dero too was on flames in that one. But uh, following that, our uh, only defeat of the four, but this should have been a win, man. Never mind a draw, we deserve to win this game. Took on Milan, right now in the top four, trying to keep themselves in the Champions League places, and we should have won it. We lost by three goals to two in a really topsy turvy game. Uh, Theo Hernandez made it 1 0, uh, capitalising on a rare or Dero error. But Patagna scored his first Serie A goal of the season, making it 1 1, and Esbozito made it 2 1 right before the break as we took the lead. But in the second half, six minutes after the restart, Borja may around makes it a 2-2. Milan get back on level terms and late on in the game we hit the woodwork through Patagonia, so almost won it and then the other end, Rafael Leal, Nottingham Forest legend makes it 3-2 as Milan won it and broke our hearts right to death. We deserve to win that game. We were a better team. We would have seen it by the stats but sadly just didn't get a rubber to green as Milan got the three points. But following that, a bounce back win uh, with a 3-0 victory away against Rock Bottom Spal. Uh, Esbozito making it 1-0 five minutes before the break for his second goal in two. Then the Pauli scored again uh, uh, six minutes after the restart and this is one of those games where the Pauli just just absolutely turns up you know he assisted the first goal scored the second with a thunderbolt and then played a part in the third goal as well after Salcedo uh, turned in an Esbozito shot which was uh, saved for his third goal in four games. Yes, Salcedo's had a real resurgence in form right now. And as you can see, after nine points from a possible 12, we've now jumped up to eighth place in the table with just nine games to go. 44 points on the board. We finished in 11th place last season with 47 points in total. So we should, bar an almighty collapse, finish with a higher league position and points tally than last season. And right now, just currently one point behind Sassuolo in seventh place. That will be the Europa Conference League spot. And as for Napoli, they should now be able to hold on to a Europa League spot at the very lowest, but only four points behind Inter in sixth place. Both Europa Conference League and Europa League is still firmly in touching distance. And I also want to show you something real briefly as well, which I'm sure you'll be very happy to see. Yes, for the first time, Eddie Salcedo and Sebastiano Esposito were called up to the Italy squad by Gasparini. And as you can see, he decided to start them together in a friendly against Germany. And Esbozito scored both goals to win them the game. 
He's had a relatively difficult season for us as Bozito in front of goal. He's not been anywhere close as good as he was uh, last season, that is for sure. But he converted an early penalty. Germany got back on level terms, but then with 13 minutes to go, as Bozito, the 19-year-old wonder kid, in his first game for Italy, bagged the game winner. I don't like to see these stats going down here. I don't know why his ability just hasn't really increased at all this season. And his determination has gone down by one as well. I don't know why on earth that would happen. Getting your first call up for Italy, scoring your first goals, winning them again. I don't know why that would happen. But um, either way, he has struggled a little bit this season for us. He's been nowhere near as efficient as he was last year. But he's still been our most reliable source of goals. It was just so cool to see him and Salcedo uh, starting up top together and winning their first caps for the country as well. Fair play. And it won't be long before we see the likes of Armini and Perola getting call-ups as well. I'm sure of that. A long way to wait, I think, before Bacardi gets a call-up. But either way, that was really cool to see Esbozito and Salcedo winning their first cap. So, yeah, first of two games today, it is indeed Cagliari away from home. And I would definitely say today, we need to win back-to-back -back if we are to have a great chance of finishing in the Europa League spot. If we lose both our games today on the back of a really good run of form, then I think Fiorentino will leave for us. Cagliari could do so as well and I think all we'll have to do is settle for a top half finish at the very best. Right now in injury reports, St uh, Storaro is down after some knee tendonitis. Everyone else is fit enough to play though and this is our team. It's the 5 2 one 2 Tiki Taka we used in every game apart from the Milan game in the run of camera. In that one we used the uh, the counter attacking system and this will be our team. Odero is in goal. Back five is Muri, Papetti, Perodo, Armini, Dupali with Viviani with Sodi through the middle. Claudio Picardi is the advanced playmaker. Really struggling this year and up top Salcedo having a great resurgence in form and Sebastiano Esposito as well. On the bench Mola, Sistana, Magnani, Martello, Sabelli, Iglio, Mazzai, Zaccagni, Dalmonte, Rovaglia, Campagna and Patagna as well. First to two, it's Cagliari away. Got to keep the good form going. Forza Brescia. First highlight, fall into Cagliari. Dalbert down the left-hand side with De Pauli to beat. Whips it into the middle. Marco Rog takes over. And now Nego is down the right-hand side. Beats Mew, whips it in, and Simeone makes it 1-0. This is just typical, man. Off-camera, great run of form. Come back, first game, six minutes in, we're down by a goal. My boy's a camera shy, man. These are young lads, and they're very, uh, they're very self-conscious. You know, when the camera's on, they just feel a lot more nervous. One nil down, 17 minutes in. Plenty of time to respond. Though we've been in great form lately. Three wins in our last four. Again, should have been four wins in four. Really, I trust this team to get back on level terms. Not before long. Fabio down the right, dispossessed by Simeone though. And Cagliari will come forward themselves here with Dalbert taking over. Slow, sluggish start for Brescia. And that's been unlike us lately. Marco Rog down the right. Viviani to beat. Whips in across. Same combination. And Simeone makes it 2-0. Awful start. What's going on? Lose this game and it is over. No doubt. Brobbery running through. Brobbery. Brobby running through. And Ordero makes the save and turns behind for a corner. What? What is this? I mean, seriously. Great run of form. Put up such a brave fight against Milan. Now, Cagliari away. Of all due respect to them, we're 3-0 down. 26 minutes in. What is this? Fuck's sake. Honestly, th these are the games that frustrate me more than anything else. Like... <laughs> It's just because we're not putting up a fight. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind it. Like that like Milan game, for example. I don't mind that. I don't mind if we lose that game. We played well. We put up a good fight. We did our best. We tried our hardest. But this is just embarrassing. Absolutely pathetic. 3-0 down. And there's me saying, oh, yeah, we're still in touching distance of the Europa League. Might as well be in touching distance of the fucking relegation zone playing like this. It's just shocking. 3-0 down. And this could become 4 right before the break. What has happened today? Gnoto, down the right-hand side, beats Nicola Muru, whips it in. Perola heads clear. Vasoli brings it down. But as Viviani sends it long, we need a lifeline, man. If we don't get a goal before the break, it's game over. Pauli, down the right-hand side. Acres of space for Fabio. He's been in better form lately. Slides it infield to Picardi. And now Viviani takes over. Pop it out wide. Pop it out wide. There we go. Because look at the Pauli in space there. So whip it in. He'll roll it through. And as Bozito gets the goal against his former club on loan. 3-1. And that's the lifeline we needed. Right, okay. Despite that being the case, I'm still going to get aggressive at halftime because this is just absolutely shocking. Show me something else in the second half. What I'm going to do as well is up the tempo because you know I love to do that. And uh, tell the boys to be more expressive. If they want to express themselves and get themselves a goal to get back in this game and reduce deficit to one, I'd like that a lot. Second half begins. Fours of Brescia, man. Let's make the comeback of comebacks here and get ourselves back on level terms. Ball whipped out wide. One back by Dalbert. And here come Cagliari. Cagliari just more up for it than we are today. That's just a simple truth. Haven't turned up. 
haven't wanted it enough. Simeone's torn us apart all game long as well, but Zarmini wins it back here. Oh, it's a penalty for Cagliari, and just... Just award it, ref. Come on, mate. When when has this ever not resulted in a penalty, man? Come on, just give it. Like I said before, when the incidents are right on the edge, and I mean right on the edge, then yeah, sure, go over to the stand and make us wait. But when it's clearly inside the area, just award it, man. You know it's a spot kick. Anyway, Odero pulls off the rugs. Is that his third penalty save? of this season. It's definitely two for sure, but I think it's his third penalty save of the year. Emil Ordero, man. We would be right down the bottom of the table if it was not for him. This guy is too good for Brescia. He's kept us in the game, but with all the chances Cagliari have had today, it's only a matter of time before they get another one. Viviani wins it back though and sends Salcedo down the line, beats his man. Great turn of agility. And how can he finish? Oh, he can't. That's on camera, Eddie Salcedo for you. Off camera, he's been burying them lately, but on camera, Jesus, what was that? Way off target, still 3-1. We needed that to find the back of the net, mum. Bacardi on a 6.4 as well. He's been shocking this year. I know he's only 18 years old. As Simeone blazes it way over the bar, but which one goal, no assists. He's really strong. He needs a loan spell somewhere, man. I'm going to loan Picardi out next year, I think. He just can't do it in this area at the moment. De Paoli's corner. Headed off the bar by Esbozito and Cagliari escape. Man, oh, man. We've had the chance today. Just haven't taken them. Well, that is very disappointing. 3-1. What on earth happened there? We were 3-0 down. They should have scored more. They had plenty of chances as well. I've praised our defense all season long, but today we were torn apart and then some, particularly by Simeone. That, that is disappointing, man. And normally I'll say in all of our losses, unlucky. It would have been nice to win it wasn't to be, but no, that's, that's disappointing. Come back from the international break after three wins in four, and that defeat there means we're four points behind Inter. We're one behind Sassuolo, but they've both got games in hand as well. Need, needed a win. Couldn't even get a draw. I was talking about Claudio Picardi being the next Roberto Baggio as well. That's what the media deem him to be. But based on his low return in terms of productivity, I think the guy gets very unfairly treated by the media. But the one player that stands out to me right now is Jesse Lingard. The Picardi's more like Claudio Jesse Lingard Picardi. Because he can't get an assist or a goal to save his life this year. I mean, he's again, he's only 19 years old, so I can't be too critical. But, mate, you, you got to show me more than this. If you want to be in my team, you got to give me something more than that. So, Sunday fixtures here. Uh, yesterday, Inter just beat Udinese by a goal to nil. So, they've now gone seven points clear of us with eight games to go. We'll process through these ones together. And if Sassuolo beat Empoli... I would say for sure our European dreams will be over unless we beat Fiorentina in that game next Saturday. And yep, Sassuolo won, so that means now, as you can see, Inter, seven points clear, eight games to go. Sassuolo, four points clear, eight games to go. Yeah, if, if we can't beat Fiorentina, it's officially over. So let's do it then. Second and final game. Got to win. Otherwise, I think our Europa League dreams die today. When you look at our remaining fixtures for the season, by the way, I mean, Citadella are away. That's, that's a banker. That's definitely a win. Palmer at home, we can beat as well. Lazio will definitely lose to Genoa. We should beat. But Juventus and Inter as well. We're going to have at least three, and at the very least, three defeats in our remaining fixtures. And when you think of the quality that Inter have in their team, Sassuolo are a better team as well. Yeah, there's some definitely winnable fixtures in this run. We can keep ourselves in touching distance, but really, I think this, this is the one, really. This is the game. Failed to win this, and I just can't see us keeping up with the boys of us right now, especially not into Milan. So Fiorentina at home, fours of pressure, man. Come on. Got to put it right in this one here. So we'll stay with the 5-2-1-2 Tiki Taka, but I do believe we do drop out of the chance of making the European spots. What I might do in the remaining fixtures is just do some real experimentation with other systems as we only really use this one now. And we need some more in our arsenal as we're going forward in the save. And uh, yeah, this will be our team for the game. Then Odera is in goal. The back five is now Muro, Sistana coming back in, Perola, Armini and De Pauli with Viviani and David Mazzai through the middle of the park. Bacardi keeps his place in the team but for how much longer supporting Salcedo and Esposito and on the bench Mola, Papetti, Magnati, Martella, Sibeli, Iglio, Storari, Zacagni, Dalmonte, Roviglia, Campagna and Patagna as well. Forza Brescia gotta win this one man otherwise I think we're out of the European race. Viviani, Crossfields, and Nicola Muru takes over down this left hand side about 25 yards from goal. Floats across to the back stick. The Pauli picks it up as the wing backs link up and in it goes to Salcedo who had been amongst the goals lately. 
but heads that cross wide. Still 0-0, no, no, but a good start. Come on, Brescia. Very encouraging signs here early on. De Paoli's corner headed away, but Lorenzo's going to pick it back up for us here. Way down this right-hand side and find Armini. And now as Mazzai takes over, David is going to cross field to De Paoli. Right now looking like the danger man for us. Comes into the area, shoots from a tired angle, but Radu makes the save. It's all Brescia in the early going here. Fiorentini yet to get a shot away, but that could change here. Stefano Shirawi in the box. Pegs it back to Igor. Space on the edge. Shot floated just wide of Ordinaria's post. You, you feel really with both teams only one point between each other. Like the loser is not going to make a late run for the Europa League spots, man. Whoever loses is out of the European contention. That's for sure. As Patrick Cutroni loses out to Sistana, who will drop to El Shirawi. And you feel like the draw does neither side a favour as well. There's so much riding on this game here. El Shirawi down the left. Shut down. And Armini wins it back. Well done, Nicolo. And as our centre-back charges forward over the halfway line, I don't really want to see that, but that's what I do want to see. What a ball! Oh, for goodness sake, Sebastiano. You can do it for Italy, you can't do it for us. I mean, he did score in the last game, to be fair. But either way, he's just not been the same striker this year. Nowhere near as reliable. So disappointing. Should have buried that. Last year he does, this year he doesn't. Still deadlocked at 0-0. So much riding on this game, man. Neither team can afford to lose. The point does neither side a favour. So bloody tense here as Armini slides through to Pauli. And Fabio finds Picardi. Who cross fields to Muru. Excellent end to the first half here. Now could get a goal to show for it as well. Muru crosses. And Sebastiano hits the woodwork. And Fiorentina get it behind for a corner. So many times this year we've hit the frame of the goal. Been so unlucky. Half time. Been a better team. Still tied at 0-0. I'm going to say it to the boys here. Calmly. Keep it calm. We're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we will win this. I'll individually criticise the attack and the midfield as well. And see if we can get a better response in the second half out of the lads here. Second half, still dealt with a 0-0. I think someone's going to win this, man. I think one goal will separate the sides and someone's going to win this. And Fiorentina almost went in front. They themselves hit the woodwork and we scrambled the ball away. This is so bloody tense, man. Five minutes to go. I think that is probably going to do it. Martella on for Mura will be my final change. I can't see anyone getting a winning goal now. And it turns out I was wrong. No one did find a winner. And in the end, it does end up as a goal of straw, which really does neither team a favour. Yes, we bounced back with a clean sheet on the back of the loss to Cagliari. But again, draws, draws are not going to keep us with Inter and Sassuolo. Had to win that one. So what I'm going to do is going to play the Citadella game today as well. Because that should be a banker. And we'll need to win that game if we're to have any chance of staying in the race for European places. Sassuolo just beat, uh, who was it yesterday, Atalanta, uh, away from home. So with Inter away at Napoli, we need Napoli to do us a favour there at the Stadio San Paoli. Otherwise, I can't see us catching up. We're six points behind Sassuolo. And yes, Napoli did do us a favour. One way a goal to nil. So the gap remains at six points. And there's no games in hand for those two above us right now. So what we'll do is we'll play the Citadella game. You see uh, Sassuolo's final run and Inter's final run as well. There's still a chance, but we're going we're gonna to need to be perfect in all of the games other than Inter, Juve and Lazio. Otherwise, we won't catch up. Right, this is it. I don't normally do triple headers, but <laughs> I mean, I need to see us win, man. We've got to get the three points here against Citadella. Otherwise, it is game over and good night pressure for sure. Uh, as you can see today, Sassuolo are away against Bologna. So tricky test for them. And tomorrow, you've got Inter at home to Roma as well. So you could see those teams dropping points there. And if that happens, we can cut the gap. But only if we beat Citadella today. We should. I know they won their last game, but they've been in horrendous form. One of the worst forms in the division right now. Looking likely to go down. Fours of pressure, man. If we can't win this game, it is over. There is no way we're catching up. Same to the game. As you can see, a couple changes to our lineup. We'll persist with the 5 2 1 2 tiki taka, but if we fail to win this one, I'll do some experimentation in the final few games as there's no chance we'll make the European places then. Or Dare is in goal, and the back five remains the same. Euris is standard, Pirelli and Armini, with Basoli coming back in to support Viviani through the middle. Picardi stays in the advanced playmaker role, but yeah, next season he's getting loaned out, and yes, has a great end to the season. Supporting Salcedo and Esbozito, and on the bench, Mola, Papetti, Magnani, Martella, Sabelli, Iglio, Mazzai, Zaccagni, Del Monte, Rovaglia, Campania, and Pitagna as well. Forza Brescia win this game, otherwise it is over for definite. I'm going to say to the boys, assertively, assertively, if we play our game, we'll win. You're all very capable of that. Let's get assertive in the dressing room here. We... 
you know, we have got what it takes here to break into the top eight. We've had such a fantastic season, defensively in particular. The amount of shutouts we've had this year has been amazing. These are the games that should be bankers. Can't be slipping up in these. And Sassuolo up early away against Bologna as well. That's not good to see. All we can do is do our job though. But right now, halfway through the first star, still tied at 0-0. There's just, there's no creativity. No creativity. Picardi, I'm looking at you, son. I'm looking at you. Come on. Fucking hell. I mean, honestly, the goals have totally dried up this year. Completely. Esbozito is the only guy that can put it in the back of the net on a regular basis. And this season, he's not done that. Picardi clearly can't do it alone as the creative force. I'm going to change his role around to an enganche. An enganche. And play... So Cagney on for Armini as the advanced playmaker now. And see if we can find ourselves a goal here. Because, I mean, we're going for it. Because we might as well lose the game by chasing a win. Because a draw, again, does us absolutely no favours whatsoever. Second half to begin. It's, it's now or never. I've got to remind myself it's only season three. But these are the games that really frustrate me, you know? Like, seriously, we haven't done anything today. And finally, the first title is going to fall with 10 minutes to go. We need a goal here. The Cardi shot block that will drop to Fabio. De Pauli down the right. Floats one in. And Zacagni heads off target. All we've done today. Couldn't hit the target. Oh, you are joking. No, no, no. Surely we're not going to lose it towards the end. Header just over the bar. Sides of Dell need to win themselves to keep themselves up this year. But... My goodness, that would have been embarrassing. It's over then. It's over. I mean, again, I, I can't I can't forget about the fact it's only season three and we're such a young team. We shouldn't even be in a position to qualify for a European place, but these are games we should be winning, man. Should be winning. Disappointing. Disappointing. It's it's over now. We, we're not catching up. Sassuolo won, I believe, in their game as well. Um, yes, they did. 3-1 away against Bologna. So it's it's over now. Into play tomorrow, but they're five points clear with that game in hand as well. We've still got to play them too. It's over. It's over. No European football next year, but it's it's a long-term project. Got to remind myself of that. A long way to go. A long, long, long way to go. I'm going to experiment with the tactics a little bit in our final six games, I think. See if we can find a secondary system to use uh, for next season. One that I quite like. And despite Roma taking points off into there, it's a little too late, really. As you can see, that means the gap between us and them now extends to six points. Eight between us and Sassuolo with just the six games remaining. Yeah, it's, it's looking like likely now we might drop out of the top 10 come the end of the season, but it's 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 over. But again, positives, man. Positives. We, we've got to keep things in perspective. It's only season three. And the biggest positive for me this year is the amount of clean sheets we've had. Fifth best defensive record in the division, only conceding 26 goals in 32. I mean, yes, the goals getting scored is a big concern. But yeah, defensively this year, you know, when you think about season one and, and where we were, We've, we've, we've made leaps and bounds in terms of our progress defensively. And again, to be in the top 10 in Season 3, that's still good, man. That's still very good indeed. Trust the process. It's a long-term series. It's a long-term project, man. Trust the process. That was today's episode, though. So, big fan of fortune. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we will return with the season finale then. Uh, we will play the inter game if there's a slight chance. But it is unlikely. And then Empoli away on the final day as well. Where hopefully, we have at least returned to winning ways in one of these three fix uh, four fixtures here. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the season finale of the season three uh, <laughs> very soon.